Hey, I'm Jeff. I'm Lee. I'm Stu. We're No Devotion. The first song on the record, Starlings, is very influenced by a Matthew Dickman poem um, called The Black Album. Well, Matthew Dickman's a lovely writer. Uh, he wrote a book called Mayakovsky's Revolver, which is a huge influence on me. Um, he's also a beautiful person. I named The End of Longing after uh, a Chelsea Hodson piece in her book, Tonight I'm Someone Else. And, you know, I just, I've always been very influenced by, by you know, prose and, and novelists and poets more than I am by other lyricists and other vocalists. Um, that's just the way my mind works. I, I don't even tend, you know, I think I, I tend to think of myself more as a communicator than a singer. You know, um, I try not to worry too much about whether or not my voice is sounding perfect or if I'm hitting the exact pitch but more as long as I'm effectively communicating the thing that I'm trying to say. Um, and sometimes effectively communicating <coughs> means being perfectly in, in tune and in key and you know having a completely musical delivery more than, than it does having a direct or a raw feeling. But you know, I always rely on Stu uh, as my favorite producer that I've ever worked with to make sure that I'm hitting that emotional mark effectively and sometimes it means not hitting the note as on the nose as i can even you know but being more raw leaning into it using a different microphone that doesn't sound good you know um it just depends on the context of the situation i don't think i would find it surprising but i just feel like it always hits the notes that in your head you kind of hope you're gonna hear it pretty much we talking about it yesterday like it just usually nails it like first time like you yeah. it back and it's like i think it's very rare that it's not what you want to hear you know for me it's like i trust jeff's taste so if he if he latches onto a song then i i trust it's the right song and then he always gives way more to the song than than i could imagine so the just from the lyric standpoint and just the the emotional like content like the just the delivery everything is just elevates the song so much to me it's 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 unbelievable yeah so um, I think the lyrics are amazing on this record as well. Like, yeah. Really, really good. No Oblivion. Like when you see that one written down, it just looks so fucking cool. Yeah, you know, I, I like, didn't really put that together until I saw it all written down. Yeah. And I was like, holy crap. You know, so yeah. Um, there's lots of lines here and there which just get me. You know, like there's there's lines in... Um, remember the first time he sung the chorus to a sky deep and clear? And it blew me away because... I just couldn't believe, like the note choices were just completely different to what I would imagine, you know, so it was just so great to hear that. And uh, like the, yeah. One of the ones for me was when I first heard Starlings, they sent the demo back and I'm just sitting on the balcony, just, like drinking coffee and I was like, this verse is cool. This is good. And then you get a little break and then the chorus melody comes in. And I remember just had a, like a chill down your spine and just like smiling, like massive smile. Like, yeah. That is amazing. The thing that I really bring to, um, to the band, I think, is that these guys both really know what they're doing. They're experts and they've done it so well for so long. And, and for me, I always a little bit approach things like an amateur in the sense that like, I don't really know what I'm supposed to do. So I just do what my instinct is. And um, I think a lot of the times you can, you there are people that I, I have so many friends who are so accomplished that they sometimes do what they think they should do instead of what yep. works. And so sometimes I'll just throw in what I think works at it. And the amazing thing about working with Stu and Lee is that they know what I'm doing. They understand, okay, he decided to go in this mode. He took a minor here where maybe it should have gone major and that's cool. Or he went chromatic here and that, I don't think that's really working for him. I'm gonna show him the notes that he could have used if he didn't go there. And that's the kind of thing that when I hear a melody, it's just what I hear. And I don't really understand that there are other choices. I mean, on some level, I understand that there are infinite choices because <laughs> it's music, but I just don't hear it. And so Stu will often say like, that's cool, you're doing this. And he'll play it on a piano. And then he'll say, and that's this this against this chord. And you're actually, see, you're adding notes that aren't in there, there, but can be in there. And that changes the mode into this mode. And if you didn't want that, you could also do this is this scale. And you could do this is this scale. And uh, you know, your range is here. I think this is a really nice note for if you want to put that in somewhere, it's a beautiful note. And, um, and that is really inspiring for me because I get to have my first instinct 
and, and have my visceral response to what the song is asking me for. And then I can hear a little unexpected joy that I can put back into my melody and then I, then I can find if I have that note to work with now, like what is the emotional resonance of that note in different places? Okay, here it sounds out of place. Here it sounds like I'm surprised. Oh, here it sounds like a, a crushing blow, a defeat in the middle of my melody, you know? And you have to think about the emotional resonance of the different notes and where they fit in, in the song and the storytelling that you're trying to tell. And if you have one that you didn't know you had, sometimes you can use it as your secret weapon. And other times it just, you can't, you can't fit in and it doesn't work for you. <laughs> but having the option to go back and put those things in is like, it's, it's, I learned so much working with these guys and that's really, um, that's really what I love about playing in this band. That, that's my favorite thing is, is I like to write a song that I like to deconstruct it like 10 different ways. Like I like to get like, I'm like Jeff, like I like my visceral idea to be down and captured because I generally that's the right thing. I think, you know, like not that I think, you know, I, I just think there's something to be said about just first instincts, but then to go back especially with Pro Tools and things like that, just to be able to go back and cut chords around and move things around and kind of see how things could could go, you know, kind of take a glimpse into different directions, sometimes can really, doesn't always work, but sometimes you can just find complete magic there. So I'm always, that's why some, sometimes the songs take a long time because I, I spend a lot, long, a lot of time deconstructing things. Like music to me visually is, is like graphic design where I like to move things around and it's, it's yeah, it's, I've studied classic songwriting, I've studied, you know, theory, but it's only so I can forget about it all. I don't know, I don't think there's many people and many bands that can actually really truly connect with people. So that's what I look for all the time. Like, I'm always looking for the, I grew up listening to like David Bowie, and like, to me, that was something I didn't find anywhere else. I, don't, I never would only find in a few other artists, so I'm always trying to find that feeling I found when I was seven years old when I first heard David Bowie, you know, so to me, Jeff has that. It's very reassuring to look at the rules and know that you got it right. And I think it's a lot scarier to trust yourself and to understand that your tastes, something is right for, for what you think is good and that you have a pretty good gauge of that because you've been around a lot of music and you've listened to a lot of music and you've made a lot of music. And, uh, and I think yeah. that that's my favorite thing about being a little older now, you know, not being 20 and just trying it for the first time is I have a pretty good idea that if I like it, that I'm, yeah. I'm doing it right the way I want yeah, to do it. Yeah, yeah, I know? mean, that, that, that's the biggest thing is like when you're younger, you're scared your taste isn't good enough. You know, so you, you're more willing to kind of play along with everybody else. Whereas when you just get older, you're like, well, this is my taste and I can't really do much about this. So I might as well lean into it. Yeah, every, when you're younger, every time you make a decision that's not with the pack, you're like, well, then this is this. Yeah. Fuck everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you get a little older, it's like, no, okay. You yeah. guys do your thing, but this yeah. is my thing. Yeah, and that's totally cool. Yeah. <laughs>